Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general business is, uh, well, the only one for general business is Mr. Iser. And I got here early for nothing. <laughs> uh, does, does everybody have the email that I sent to Bill and Jim? When? Yesterday. I did not forward it. I got busy yesterday. Okay. Okay. So, so I have a question. i am <clears throat> been asked to do a survey at 4 Lawrence Plain Road, which is on the corner of Lawrence Plain and Bay Road. It's owned by Becky Chimura, whose husband was David Chimura, who passed away several months ago. Um, so you, she's trying I, to... I enabled pardon? screen sharing if you have it. Um, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't have it. I've got it on another computer, Bill. I have it up. Want to give me screen sharing, Bill? I'll try. Yeah, everybody's in, I have enabled screen sharing. Okay. So that's on the south side or north side? The east uh, side or on the west side? <laughs> yeah. South side of Bay Road, east side of Lawrence Plain. It's a brick house. I think it's brick. It sits up on the hill. Yeah, with the oh, barn. Yeah, okay. they, yeah. big barn. Didn't they abandon a garage driveway or something a few years mm, back? I don't know. That I can't answer. But it's got the barn with the blue tarp over it. Well, the house used to have blue tarp on it. And maybe the, the house does. I mean, the, maybe the barn still does. I don't know. Gotcha. What is the I don't get why I can't screen share stuff? It's on my screen, but it doesn't show up. Uh, if you have it open and then you go to your share screen, it should give you options of which screen, and then you have to pick that one. Violence, yeah, it's just you're just not for some reason. I, I've got it opened. And when I go to share screen, nothing that's a PDF shows up. Tell them how to do it, Zeke. You're a pro at this stuff now. <laughs> Bill, do you want to do it? Okay, let me see what I can do here. Or if you want to forward the email to me, I'm, I'm happy to... Okay, well, let me just uh, take a shot at this. Um, I have to save it to my desktop, I guess. Okay, Mark, I sent it to you. All right, and so I'm on an old Mac, so I just opened mail. It may take a few centuries to boot up. I was thinking I was on my work. Oh, you did it, Bill. Okay. Good job. All right. So my question is this. There is enough frontage. There's enough area to create two lots. I'm running into a situation with the 150-foot square, i.e. the Zagrodnik box. If you look, I have a green square, a light blue square, and a magenta square. So the green square would be for the Bay Road lot, and either the magenta or the light blue would be for the Lawrence Plain lot. And my question is, do I have to have the box completely around the house, or can I keep it outside the house? Nothing in our bylaw dictates that the house has to be in the 150 foot box. So you could essentially take your your purple, I'm gonna call it your purple because I'm not good with your, your funky magenta things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your purple box and extend it, I guess it would be northward, and shrink it a little bit so that it misses the green box on Bay Road. Then you're going to have a box that's going to be well over 150 by, it'll be 150 by 150, but it'll have a lot more frontage on Lawrence. I'm assuming you want to keep it on Lawrence Plain Road. That'll be the full lot, right? 
Correct. Okay, so take that white white blue line. I think that's what you mean. I'm going to call it teal, but anyways, the light blue line, and make it so that it doesn't encompass the green line, the yep. green box. Yeah. And obviously, keep the purple one the full size. Yeah. And then just adapt your line accordingly. Okay. It, uh, it almost looks like you could move the light blue north up to the corner and get the blue and the green to not – looks pretty close. Right. It would be close there. Yeah. They're so, going to intercept, but nevertheless. Yeah. Um, right. Well, meet, yeah. You meet the definition of the – am I – does the rest of the group agree with me? So the – the Grodnick box would apply to new construction, but if you have a site that has the has the, the Grodnick box, are we so we're saying the an existing building doesn't have to be in it. Do we even care if the new building's within the box as long as you have a box on the site, right? Well, the original the original intent was when uh, the frontage was 125, then it went to 150 feet. People got very imaginative the way they would construct their lots. So sometimes you could not even get a house on this particular lot. And people would have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals in order to appeal for a side yard, backyard, or setbacks. And so uh, the original intent was as long as you could get a house on there. And it didn't have to be in the box or not in the box, but it, this seems to have the sufficient frontage, the sufficient area, the setbacks will not be compromised. Am I correct in assuming all of those, Randy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was the way I would interpret it, Joe. I mean, okay. because okay. they have a box. Yep. They have adequate property frontage and everything, and the house isn't inside the box. So what? I don't read any place in a bylaw that has to be. I mean, right. as long as you get the house in, it conforms with everything else. That yeah, that it, exactly. The house is still going to conform with all the, the bylaw. Right. So right. tell yeah. me again what the purpose of the box is. If you don't have to put the house inside the box, why even have it? Because I could show you, I could. I would have to draw you a picture, Mike, but people would put a, uh, a long, skinny lot. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. You'd have a 150 foot frontage. You'd go back a few feet. So that you have a 150 foot frontage. Let's say you go back 10 feet and then they would shrink the box down to 20 feet wide and go way, way back. And it would have all kinds of weird shapes to it. So you'd have the proper amount of square footage, but go ahead and try and build, build a house inside of a lot that looks oh. like. A, so it has to be a, it has to be a square. Yeah. Yeah, okay. At, at a minimum. <laughs> and, yeah. and if you have buildable space outside of that square, that's fine. When I say you just say yeah, this, yeah, okay. The site has to have at least a buildable square. Correct. Not that you have to be in it. Right. And where where I put the house would have to comply with the setback requirements. But correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what I figured, but I just wanted to clarify. And that is section 4.3.7 of the bylaw for those who are keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I think that's all I need, gentlemen. You know, what was that? 4.3.7? 4.3.7. Nice. No, Jim, uh, uh, did Randy, is he dismissed yet? No, I'm here. Randy, uh, the uh, planning board did send some notification to the board of selectmen regarding the, uh, the way we're going to line up our annual town meeting. So yep. we'll just continue the one where it was adjourned because of lack of quorum, or is it going to be completely, so will the planning board article be put at the end again? It'll be a whole new meeting and I know Bill, I believe it was Bill that sent the email requesting that the planning board's articles get put first. And I have no problem with that. I will lobby for that for you guys because uh, it's been two meetings now. We don't need it to be three. And we will have a hot article uh, that can go at the end 
as well. If the if the object is to keep people's attention, <laughs> we can yeah. see something controversial. Put it put it out there. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what you got to put something at the beginning and something at the end to keep everybody there. Yep. Keep so. them sharp. All right. Well, we'll we'll have to uh, factor that into the next warrant and try to keep it spicy all the way through. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. All right, you guys are welcome. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, just as a point of information, um, Attorney Reedy has requested an extension for the Hadley Garage to the, one of the meetings in January. So I'm proposing that we put it on the first meeting in January because the second meeting, I believe, is scheduled for uh, Mr. Michelson. Is that correct, Bill? Yes, he was continued to then. He can ask for a further continuance if he wants, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'll let Michael. I'll let, I'll let Kevin know that it's going to be a Zoom meeting. We don't see any end in sight, and see what he says. And I'll let uh, Attorney Pill know so he can let his clients know. That would be January fifth. That would be correct. Yeah, that'll be the one for uh, Hadley Garage. I'm assuming that probably the same thing may happen with the Gundersheim one. Mm -hmm. If nobody shows up tonight. Mm -hmm. So I did send an email to the, the, uh, the contractor, but I don't have a reply and I'm not necessarily expecting one. Okay. I will... Um, forward that email from Tom Reedy to Jessica, ask her to print it out, stamp it, and put it in the file. Oh, you have, he, he sent you a copy too? Yeah. Okay. Or you can do it either way. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I was going to forward it to uh, Jessica and I was going to reply to him and include Jessica and ask her to stamp it and give Tom a date of the next, of the next meeting for them. Um, so let me just double check here. Uh, okay, it went out. So, um, uh, Gundersheim. So, should I just make a motion to continue Gundersheim to uh, one, January 5th? One, one five, yes. I would second that. Okay. Motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, Mr. Comia. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? It's Very well. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I just came on because I, I sent an email to Jim and Bill regarding some of the next steps with some of the, the next things that the board will be looking at. Um, I um, And I take it that the town meeting that you were supposed to have didn't happen or... Not, not as far as it got, never got to us yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so I guess those items, there's still some time to refine that definition, or did you come to some sort of conclusion on that? Well, what we're going to do as far as how to define, as far as we're going to set a value ourselves. Okay. What the donation should be based on a lot, a, 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 a project. And if the developer... Could, could definitively prove otherwise it would be less expensive, we would let him use that number. Okay. Was that going to be um, set in the, the bylaw or does that language have to come? Re regulations. Into okay. Yeah. I mean, I've got a pretty good feeling of what a wholesale cost is because I'm putting a, a decent addition onto my house and... There's no way you're going to put it. I'm not even putting a kitchen in the addition. I was putting a bit, uh, being a living, a bigger living room, a bathroom, and an office, mm -hmm. and a cellar. No 
fancy anything. I mean, it's definitely no, no kitchen. I don't need another kitchen, nor do I want one. And there's no way you could wholesale put in this, put a build a house for $85 a square foot. I'm, that's it for sure. Jim, your suggestion, I think, is a good one because it's going to be a constantly moving target. And as you can see, in the last six months, the target for lumber was... Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't base anything on the last six months because it'd be out of sight. But I'm basing my price because I've got most of my prices were based on things that were ordered before the virus hit or okay. orders were put in. And it's costing me about... I want to say about $105 a square foot. Okay. So I mean, I've talked to several developers and Western Mass, uh, was it West, on, on Cadwell, was it Western Mass Builders, Builders Association? Yep. And on Cadwell Drive. And they're all telling me wholesale price would be about $200 a square foot. Well, I think you can do it for a lot less than that. But you can't do it for 85 either for the price that we have. If you build it for 85, you're getting not a lot. And the other thing that they, they made a comment about, the larger the house, typically the less expensive per square foot. Because you, when you fit your kitchen in versus living quarters or a living room, it's often spread out over a smaller square footage because a, a decent kitchen cost you X. And if you spread it out over a 1,400 square foot house versus a 3,500 square foot house, you're going to come out with a drastically different cost of the, of the building on a square foot basis. So. Okay. So <clears throat> those are the ones that'll be at the beginning of the meeting. The ones at the end, I added into the agenda going forward that uh, the uh, the MEMA 2020 model floodplain bylaw, you've seen that. I okay. Yes. And that seems to be something that they want us to adopt. <clears throat> so we have a fairly extensive floodplain bylaw. I'm not sure if that is intended to replace what we have or do we have to have that in addition to whatever else we want to have. Um, the, my understanding of this is that the new bylaw, um, if there are pieces missing, um, then, you know, there should be some amendments, but if the board has gone above and beyond, or the town has gone above and beyond, I wouldn't imagine that, um, any less restriction is something that is appropriate. So I think we just need to ensure that if there's any additional, I think what I learned was some reporting requirements, um, just just as far as the various committees and, and authorities being informed of certain permits um, and sign-offs, um, that's what I gathered. But um, if there's anything missing like that in the bylaw, it's just, it's. I think it's gonna be a small amendment, if anything. So uh, we, we still don't have that map. Uh, I know Bill has said Amherst received an updated map of this zoning for the FEMA map, but uh, none has been supplied to Hadley yet, has it? Not that I, when I talk to the state, I, I'm, I'm surprised that Amherst got something um, because my understanding is that all along the Connecticut uh, River, there has been, or a lot of the communities surrounding it, they weren't looking to update because they're still doing a study um, until end of 2022, 2023. Um, Eastern Mass is getting. Well, because if, if, the, if the floodplain is extended, that's going to be controversial. You know, I don't remember it flooding, and yes, it does flood, and and uh, so it appears that people probably will not even have a chance to respond before the town meeting and meet with some of the officials. Well, so I think my, the, I used to serve as the floodplain manager in Florida for a community that I worked in as when I was a town planner there. And 
when it came to flood maps, if there was a question about, let's say the, um, you know, if there was a question about building in, in response to whatever flood plain development bylaw there was or ordinance, um, that there had to be some map change that was done at FEMA. So it's called uh, LOMER. Uh, I forgot what that acronym stands for, but. Letter of map amendment. Yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. Randy, Randy knows. Um, and so it's, it's that. And I feel like it, the FEMA process has always been kind of like, this is your map and you have to interact with it with a bylaw that we're suggesting that the town pass so that it qualifies for flood, you know, the, the national flood insurance program. Um, I think, and I don't know what historically the context has been when the town I identified or passed its last uh, zoning bylaw amendment for the floodplain um, um, regulations. But um, my understanding is that because as, as Bill has suggested, there, there may be some additional restrictions that have been placed within the town that these amendments probably wouldn't create any big difference other than there would need to be a future adoption of the FEMA map when that's ready. So it, it seems to be two distinct topics. One is MEMA, the Massachusetts emergency management people are telling us that we have to have certain language in our floodplain bylaws to satisfy the federal regs. So to that end, I think we're asking Ken to compare its article 13 of our bylaw to the, the 2020 model and uh, find out where, we, where we're good and where we're not good. The, the second part, which I have in there as a placeholder, uh, FEMA flood insurance rate map revisions, um, apparently we will at some point be told that we have to adopt amended FEMA maps, but whether that will make it before Springtown meeting or not, I don't know. I just wanted to leave it in there so we could discuss it. Well, I, I know that based on, and I think your community is the same, that based on the way the bylaw is written, it reflects or references the, fir, the FEMA maps, the um, flood insurance rate maps, um, by number. So if there are amendments to that, I imagine that it, the amendments would be those new numbered maps. Um, but I'm, I'm quickly on the, um, the uh, FEMA website where the firm maps are, the flood insurance rate maps are located. And um, you're actually, you're right, Joe, in that when I clicked Hadley, it pulled up a, a Amherst map, but maybe there's a portion and I don't quite know the boundaries um, of where, and I'll share this with, with you all. Actually, maybe I have the ability to share screen, so I'm gonna do that. So this is what I pulled up um, as what this was posted this past June. Um, So I, I, my, my geography is not great. So I'm assuming that this panel is where the, the Hadley maps would be. So if Hadley, this is. Hadley's 163, 250, 163. If you type in a, an address in Hadley, you should get Hadley stuff. I don't, I don't know what part of the FEMA website you're at, but if you. Okay. Type in a Hadley address, you'll get the Hadley maps if you're at the right place. I think you, that panel would be the southern part of Hadley. Um, what, one question right on the Amherst Hadley line is where the football field is, the stadium. Uh, that area where one between 116 and uh, the football stadium, that I believe 
was flooded in 1938. Yeah, so, Not that I was around. So that, Ken, if you wanted to try 100 uh, Middle Street, that's the town hall mailing address. If you wanted to type that in, see what you get. 100 Middle Street. Well, that was probably the 1938 flood, but there was some uh, compensation being made because of the flood control dams up north. So the 100-year flood would be reduced from the steps of the town hall by a, a couple of feet, I think, or one foot. So I'm, I'm just gonna, it's been a while since I, I played with these maps, um, but I'm just gonna show you what I put in when I, put that address in and yeah, so I, I mean certainly we it's this that's is hadley a, you have yep. to see the paper copy and unless you right can. right and and the town would have the paper copy in its hands um yeah. but with regards to it, which is the effective map this is reliant on a 1978 map which obviously is being updated at the moment um so you know when the the comment that bill made that the firm the flood insurance rate maps are being uh updated um and my understanding in talking to the floodplain manager from mima is that by 2022 that was supposed to be the case now when i um pulled up the this map um this is a preliminary map that was dated 2020 6 24 20. So I'll continue to play around. And if there's any preliminary map or at least, um, you know, kind of what the town is supposed to be looking at, if, if there are some, you know, changes in the floodplain boundary, um, that's probably going to be oh. helpful for the conversations of the so, map. So, so what does this map tell us that you're, we're looking at? Well, now? this map is telling us what the guide is to look at these these specific panels so these are all panels but i was going to play around and if there was a an updated panel um and why do we want to look at those panels because those are the the panels where the town where hadley would be so that's why i asked earlier you know if i were to look at this number would the hadley be you know in this no panel? that that's still in amherst ken Oh, okay, so it would be outside. 250, 156 is Amherst. Okay. So my, question, my, my question is, what is the significance of those numbers in the town of Amherst? What do all those panels mean? Those well, would be, Michael, if you're in the federal floodplain or the FEMA, uh, that that in for anyone anyone to qualify for uh, a loan through a federally insured lending institution, which are basically all banks. Uh, that would be one. If you're going to have any federal funding, like putting a sewer or water or something like that in, but uh, but this, but this is Amherst, and all those numbers are different. So my question is, no, I guess, why does be, Amherst have all these different numbers? No, they're not going to be different. The uh, oh, Joe, hang on, let me let me help you here, Mike. Those are different sections of town. The, the, the there's ten different maps that show different oh, areas okay, of the town. Okay, okay, okay. So it has, it has to do with geography and not flood potential. It's just the size of the town. Hadley has two okay. panels. Okay. When you, Hadley, go, they, when you go into the panel, it will show you what they say are the limits of flooding from- Okay, the okay, okay. But this is just the two controversial things are going to be if if some new areas are put into the floodplain that were not there in the old one, that will be one controversy because people will complain. But and uh, the other one is the trailer regulation along the floodway, and I think somehow Janice Stone uh, was going to be involved with that, but she is no longer working on with the Conservation Commission. Is that correct, Bill? No, she's we're still working with them. She still is? Well, she was talking about that, and that's going to be controversial because there's a movement afoot in town that people want to expand the ability to put trailers along the Connecticut River in the town of Hadley. 
And if that comes up against the FEMA regulations that said no trailers are allowed, that's going to... It'll be controversial, but uh, if it's what we have to do, we can. We, apparently we can allow trailers in the flood plain, but not in the flood way. Correct. Of course, everybody wants to be right up against the water line, but um, that's that's where they're they're going to have to cut it back and say, there's, and there's going to have to be enforcement. And Tom Quinlan understands that, and he's for you know he has a basis for enforcing now because most uh, most of the people out there never went for the special permit in the first place. Correct. So uh, we've got some enforcement tools and some enforcement obligations um but that would be one for ken to to check to make sure we have the verification one way or the other right so, yeah, that's exactly what i mean we want to compare because i think we do allow trailers in the flood way under the current bylaw and if we have to edit that to say only in the flood plane then so be it we'll do it but um yeah i'd like to just compare our, what we have versus what the model is requiring us to have. And um, we'll take it from there. That is a hot button up one because they're telling us we have to have that um, done this year or, or by the annual town meeting. Okay. Well, I'll, I mean, I, you know, I wanted to take this time and it, it's great that, um, your, your public hearings were continued so that we can have this this time to discuss. Um, but I'll you know take a look because I, I do have the model bylaw. I don't, Bill, have you shared that or circulated that with the board? Yes, I think everybody has received that. Um, but I will use that and and uh, measure against the town zoning um, to see you know where where there is discrepancy if if at all. Um, but I think regarding the map, you know, it, it looking at what I'm what I saw is that the the bylaw still reflects the 1978 um, panels. So Amherst is currently being updated, as I as I shared with you. Um, so we'll see where Hadley is, and um, from that, also see what changes there may be to the flood um, map. Bill, how many of how many of your closings re require that people purchase flood insurance, federal fl flood insurance? You have to have federal flood insurance if you're going to get a mortgage from a federally insured lending institution. So, uh, no, ma no matter if you're in the floodplain or not. <laughs> no, about uh, one in one question. in that was my question. One in ten at at best. One in ten, okay. And I think that may reflect the fact that um, people are perhaps buying the, those lots down by the river in cash. They're not mortgaging them. Yeah. And then they're moving in a uh, an RV that probably costs more than the land did. Right. And believe it or not, the banks, the local banks, don't do the analysis of the flood plain themselves. It's... it's uh, pretty much shipped out to a, a place in Texas that obviously just goes on the computer and says, yes, you're in, no, you're not. And uh, so, again, the reason, the reason I'm kind of harping on the, the changing of the, uh, the parameters of the floodplain is that when Jim and I went to the hearing that they were having at the Jones Library in Amherst, they showed us the maps and some places it was dramatically expanded mm -hmm. I, I mean yeah i mean i think to comment to that that is gonna be the case with with a lot of these map changes um you know i was part of a process in florida where the map changed and you know where a development was permitted the year before it wouldn't be allowed the following year um yeah based on the map change um, because it was near a body of water. So, yeah, I mean, I think you have to, and the town, again, it's gonna be an enforcement issue, but if the town is 
aware of um, what tools it has to review development and the building department is going to be, you know, really involved with any development that is within a flood um, zone um, that requires, you know, being built higher than the base flood elevation. Um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it, it may change. Um, I don't know if there are areas of town where you could see this happening. Um, but at the same time, there are ways to amend the map, as I mentioned, and, and Randy uh, reminded me of the acronym. But there's a process that you engage with the federal government to change the map for that parcel. Or, you know, and if it means moving the, the flood, the, what, what, what the map says by 10 feet so that your structure is not in that zone, then that's what the map change is gonna be. But you go through that process with the government, the flood, federal government. Well, well Ken, the, the cynic in me uh, <laughs> says, you know, I'm from the federal government, I'm here to help you. There's no, it's no secret that the Fema Fund is running low or bankrupt, it has to be, uh, kind of supplemented by tax dollars. And so what they would like to do is expand the floodplain in many areas, thereby getting more federal flood insurance flowing into the federal coffers in order to bolster their funds. It's a subtle way of kind of a tax increase. They've uh, raised they've raised the rates incredibly in the past several years, Joe. You're right. You're right. Somebody used to pay eight hundred dollars. Now they pay five thousand. So they're getting it, however they can. Yep. You're right. Good point, Randy. Thank you. Bill, when's the last time your part of North Hadley flooded down down there? Well, the uh, the reason I I say that is because where my farm is on you know, Stockbridge and Knightley, there's no question about it that part of it on Stockbridge is uh, in the headwaters of the North Hadley Pond. But the little brook that runs all the way north, uh, that was included in the floodplain too. Depending- the, uh, Jones Library. Depending on the, um, on the amount of rainfall or snow melt, the, uh, the culverts, under Route 47 have been full. That's about uh, a probably close to a six to eight foot rise mm. from average water level. And ours is a factor of the um, of the river backing up. Yeah. The brook backs up into the river. Sure. The river. But, yeah. But you're but a I fact of, of, of backing up, Bill, because that 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 brook that runs next to you runs all the way down behind Sarzinski, and Sarzinski's filled it in, so it backs up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that koi. Pond. No, there, there, okay. there's there's been times in the past where you could take a rowboat back of our place. I mean, you, you could go spear. I remember the Puerto Ricans for Wally Hibber would be spearing carp back there. Mike's got a hydro plant down there. Yeah, Noah, how do you build an ark? By 128 cubits, what's a cubit? Who had, oh, Bill Cosby had that one. Yeah. So I think there, we also have some problems. There are some swampy areas, and there, there, uh, did Wally Hibbard start try to grow watercress or something in there once? Yeah, right. well, either that or it grew wild, but there was a lot of it. And back of Washkevitz's, there was a lot of it. I remember them picking it and eating it. Eating it. Yep. The uh, so the, the the brook really could do a good with a good cleaning out to, uh, uh, but our around our house is the only place where it daylights basically until it gets way back into the fields. Yeah. How do you handle the beavers? This. Uh, that's been hasn't been a problem for a while. <laughs> I won't say anything. All so. Right. This so kind of segues into the other thing that I think one of our open items is um, MS4 regulations, and I realize that's still a moving target because the <clears throat> the uh, the basic 
agreement was modified by that lawsuit that was settled at the end of last year, and the effective dates have all been pushed out. But I believe we have to look at uh, MS4 general regulations and MS4 subdivision regulations. Uh, yes. So um, I believe I was copied on an email um, from Patty Gambarini, who is our environmental planner here, and, and she worked on the MS4 bylaw and regulations um, last year when we were um, taking a look at that. And the town passed the bylaw, um, as you all know, um, but we need to adopt some regulations. And I guess my understanding too is, um, you know, now I there now that we have you know this kind of lag time where we can focus on other things. I know the board was looking at planning board regulations um, that I think if we can somehow coordinate all of those types of things being passed at the same time. Um, we can work towards that. I know that Patty wanted to engage the MS4 committee at least one more time um, with uh, the DPW director. Um, you know, Jim sat on that as well as uh, Janice Stone. And, um, and there was another member, the building department. Um, just to go over what their last conversation was. It, I mean, it's been a while since that happened, but um, I think that that can happen concurrently. And I know that um, the accounting for it is is through the, the town manager's office, uh, the town administrator's office. So I guess it would be the trying to figure out when Patty can work with the committee. I, I think Jim, you're still agreeable to that happening, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I can I can talk to Patty and see you know if when she can fit in. I think she imagined like 10, 15 more hours to um, get the the sub, the the regulations. Um, in addition to addressing the MS four regulations within the subdivision regulations, um, and and get those to a point where. When, when I come in with the, and, and the board refines the planning board rules and regulations for all other aspects of, of your activities, um, I think we can probably schedule public hearing for that um, because it only needs to be adopted by the planning board um, and it doesn't need to go to town meeting for those items. So we can, we can definitely put that in the work plan um, knowing also that we do have the, um, the um, floodplain that we need to also, you know, navigate in these next couple of months. Yeah, well, the, uh, the MS4 stuff, I believe there is a separate budget item under the, under the uh, town administrator, correct? It's not under the planning board budget either. Right, right. So okay. if, if I had to choose something to scrimp on i would uh i would say the general planning board regulations might be a lower priority than getting the uh floodplain addressed and the ms4 addressed okay so i i think then what i can do is have patty reach out so that she can engage the committee at least one more time come you know come to some conclusion with that um, and then work with the board to adopt the, the regulations. Um, but in the meantime, the work that I'll be doing is, is the um, floodplain model. I'm also mindful that with the regulatory change that took away all of the uh, uh, delays in permitting, we are going to have to move into a more active permitting schedule as well. Uh, do you have do you have many in the pipeline? We have two that are pending from before COVID started, and we have just have we had the the one last meeting. We have um, two continuances for the first that you probably heard for the first. Right, we have two continuances 
and a new public hearing for January. It's January, the first Tuesday in January, we're going to have three public hearings. My guess is that two of them may not get decided. Only one's going to probably get decided. And then we have another one for the third Tuesday in January. Um, and once people realize that we have to start moving on these, like Bill says, we may get several more coming in. So right now we only got about four in the pipeline. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I guess, you know, if, if you want to place me on the agenda, I can probably take the next two months, but in the interim, you know, knowing that you have a busy schedule and maybe meet the first month, uh, first week of February, but in the interim, just share drafts. Um, and then I can pop in because for the time being, we're going to be virtual for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess that's just my, you know, kind of thought regarding that. Yeah. I don't think we have anything scheduled for two weeks from now, which I realize is a really short turnaround, but uh, that might give you enough time to sort of do an overview. And yeah, I mean, I, I can do that. I do have some time to, to navigate in the next two weeks um, that I could spend time doing that and come are on. Are you working mostly from home, Ken, or you have to go to the office? Um, I'm mostly working from home. Um, I do go to the office at least. I go, I usually go on Wednesdays um, and it's not even for the full day. Um, it's usually to do like my financing stuff and, and printing and copying, but I'm working from home. Okay. Now, this is a general question to members of the board. I know the uh, Conservation Commission is obviously going to be interested in the federal floodplain regulations. And uh, could we ask Ken to reach out to Janice Stone or wait till we get something a little bit more concrete? Wait a minute. Let's not put Ken in the in the position that he has to contact other boards. That oh, should be uh, okay. I figured you would say that, but that, that should be that should be so we don't get too many hands in a pot. That should right. be my, that should be my the board the responsibility of this board, namely me, to reach out to other boards and coordinate. Otherwise, Ken's going to go nuts trying to coordinate. So. Because, I mean, he works for us, the PVPC, I mean, he works for us, he works for the town. But, you know, otherwise, if, if he starts getting direction from two or three other boards, he's going to, he could very well be, what's the right direction? You're right. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. So I'll have something for you at the end of next Friday. So okay. you can have the weekend to review. I don't know if it's going to be an entire bylaw, but I think we'll get some context around the change. Yeah, I mean, that. basically give us an overview of what's right, what's wrong. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Bill, I finally got Balloonus' file put in your mail in a, the mailbox today. Okay. I, I'm sitting on my counter. Oh my gosh, I forgot to put it in there. So. So the only other thing I have is, uh, let me just make sure I got the right number here. Uh, Colony Estates, lot number six, requesting a um, uh, release from the, uh, from the covenant. Oh, that's the one on uh, Shattuck Road? Yeah. We, well, we released a couple last, last meeting, correct? We did. Okay. Um, we have released one in anticipation that it would be the one to be purchased, but the purchaser liked the one next to it. So, uh, lot number six, it, uh, by the way, uh, the colony has been now assigned numbers and the building inspector said the numbering on the plan was fine. So lot number six on colony drive is six colony drive. Okay. Doesn't always happen that way, but. Need a motion to release it, and yeah, I'm not participating. Okay, we still, we still have uh, several in co covenant. Uh, I think there are. Let's see, is one, two, three. This would be the fourth to be released, 
And there are eight lots, I believe. Okay. Okay. Make a motion to release lot number six, Bill. No, lot number six. Lot number six on a colony drive. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes for five. Yeah. Four zero one. one. What? So who's going to sign that bill? One of. Uh, I will get either. Uh, I'll connect either with you or Joe. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anything else? That's all I have. I have nothing else. <laughs> nothing. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Thank you.